Hey, it's John from Tablet Class Math, and I'm going to teach you exactly how to do this algebra problem. All right, so what we have here is we are subtracting rational expressions, and uh, this type of problem tends to give a lot of students uh, trouble because they make a couple of very common errors. Let's go and take a look at the problem. We have 5 minus 4r over 8 minus 2 minus 3r over 6. All right, now, if you could figure this out, put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. Also, if you need assistance with mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is the problem one more time. Take your time. Feel free to use a calculator. But uh, it's essential that if you are studying algebra that you can do this type of problem. All right, let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 7 over 24. All right, now if you got this right, that really tells me that uh, tells me that you have been paying attention in class and you are pretty good with working with rational expressions. Now, if you got this wrong, don't get discouraged because I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how to do this right now. Okay, so here is our problem 5 minus 4r over 8 minus 2 minus 3r over 6. Now, obviously, we are dealing with rational expressions. Now, effectively, a fraction with a uh, uh, numerator or uh, denominator as a polynomial is something we call a rational expression in algebra. But effectively, we are dealing with fractions. So if you can't do this problem, 3 over 8 minus 1 over 6, well, you're going to have a tough time with this problem right here. So if you're studying algebra and you're still weak with fractions, I'm talking about how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and how to find the LCD, well, you need to kind of uh, stop and immediately review how to work with fractions. Working with fractions is a key skill in algebra. So I'm going to assume that indeed you know what you're doing uh, when it comes to fractions. And if you need to review some fraction uh, skills, I'll give you some specific recommendations here in just one second. But um, when we subtract uh, fractions, okay, again, we kind of go back to my problem here, 3 minus 8 over 1 minus 6, what we need to do is find the lowest common denominator. So we don't have the same denominator. You can only add and subtract fractions when you do have the same denominator. So that's what we're going to have to do. Now, I'm going to show you a critical first step with this problem. Uh, and this is one of the things that a lot of students struggle with. And uh, they just forget to do this step because I'll tell you right now, uh, oftentimes when a problem is presented to you, whether that be a homework assignment, a test or exam, an algebra problem, uh, they leave out the parentheses. And they kind of do that purposely sometimes. In other words, what I'm talking about is the following. See, up here in the numerator, we have um, a difference. Now, if this was an addition situation right here, this would be a sum. So if you have a sum or a difference and there is no parentheses around those sums or differences, put them in. That should be your very first move. Okay, put parentheses in. Now, sometimes the problem will have the parentheses Oftentimes, they will leave them out because when you put the parentheses in, it will help uh, you avoid very, very common mistakes. So you need to, you know, kind of size up your problems and just kind of scan. Hey, do I have any sums or differences? If you do, uh, group them with parentheses. All right. So this is what you need to do uh, as a first step. All right. Now, uh, we do have these uh, rational expressions and we need to be thinking about the lowest common denominator. All right. So here is our problem. Again, the first thing I'm going to uh, kind of do is like, all right, I am have effectively two fractions, two rational expressions. I need to put my parentheses in, and then I need to be thinking about the lowest common denominator. All right, so we have 8 and 6. What is the LCD when the denominator is 8 and 6? Well, hopefully, uh, again, you're up to speed on basic fraction operations, but the LCD is 24. All right, so that is the lowest common denominator. So we need to change both of these denominators to 24. Let's go and do that right now. All right, so how do we change an 8 into a 24? Pretty easy. Uh, all we have to do is multiply by 3, which means we also have to multiply the numerator by 3. And how do we change a 6 into a 24? Just multiply by 4, but remember, 
we also have to change the numerator by multiplying by 4 as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take these steps. So we're going to um, end up with 24 here in the denominators. And uh, we'll have 3 times this and 4 times this in our numerator. So this is the result of taking that step there. All right, so we have 3 times 5 minus 4r over 24 minus 4 times 2 minus 3r over 24. Now, some of you might be confused. You might be saying, you know, I wrote the 4 right here, multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 4. It doesn't make a difference. You can put the 4 right there. And, of course, we have a 3 right here. But notice, if I didn't have the parentheses here, it wouldn't be uh, clear to a lot of students to apply the distributive property. In other words, let's suppose I didn't have parentheses. A lot of students might say, oh, 3 times 5, that's uh, 15, and that's it. So this would be 15 minus 4r. Super common mistake. Super, super common mistake, actually. And if you remember one thing from this video, uh, that is to put in your parentheses. Okay, so here we're going to have to distribute this 3 to this 5 and 4r. Okay, we have the uh, distributive property situation. Now, there is another very common error here. I'll show you that in just one second. But if you're kind of like understanding, you know, what I'm doing here and you want to, you know, maybe uh, finish the problem up on your own, just pause the video, work it out. But let's go ahead and get into the rest of the solution right now. OK, so we're going to have to apply the distributive property here in the numerators. So let's do that right now. And this is the next super common error. Matter of fact, it's so common that I put in a little flag so you can remember how to avoid this next error. All right. Now, notice that we need to apply the distributive property. Okay, in other words, we're going to take this 3 and multiply by 5 and take this 3 and multiply by this negative 4r. And then we're going to take this 4 and multiply by 2 and this 4 by this negative 3r. But here is something that really gets students in a lot of trouble. Okay, so we're dealing with a subtraction situation. Okay, this really is a plus negative on that 4 right here. Okay. Uh, and if you don't remember this, you're going to make a lot of errors. This is very confusing for a lot of students. And, you know, it's not so intuitive that you need to do it uh, to work the problem in this manner. But this will help you avoid making a lot of errors. Okay. So if this problem was an addition problem, okay, just a normal addition problem, uh, you know, you wouldn't run into this particular error. But subtraction problems, believe me, as a math teacher for several decades, this is a super common error. Okay, I really want you to understand this. So where you are subtracting rational expressions, what you want to do is say, oh, I got a subtraction situation, do the plus negative. For example, if I have 6 minus 8, what you're doing here is going uh, plus negative 8, right? So 6 plus negative 8 is the same thing as 6 minus 8. Here, you want to do the same thing, plus negative 4. So you know now to distribute that negative 4 here. Okay, this is really going to save you a lot of pain on these type of problems. So now let's go ahead and do the work. All right, so 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times minus 4r is 12r. You can see that work right here. Now we're, we basically change this problem into an addition problem. So this is negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and negative 4 times this negative 3r is a positive 12r. All right, so now we can go ahead and add these fractions. We have the same denominator, so we're going to go ahead and simply add the numerators. All right, so let's put this all together and add the numerator. So we're just basically going to have one fraction with 24 as the denominator, and we're going to have all this in the numerator. So that's going to look like this. Okay, so here is the situation. We have 15 minus 12r plus negative 8 plus 12r. So we can see here, boy, we can just cross cancel these 12 R's. They go away. And now we have 15 minus 8, which, of course, is 7 over 24. And this fraction can't be reduced. And that is how you do this algebra problem. All right. Now, if you need more help with anything, let me give you a couple uh, specific suggestions. Now, first of all, 
I hope this video helps you out. And if that's the case, consider helping me out. And the best way to do that is to subscribe to my channel. It allows me to grow my channel to reach as many people as possible. And uh, again, the only way I can do that is to have people like you saying, you know what, this, was, this guy wasn't too bad. I'll help him out. And it, all re it really takes is one click of the mouse, actually two clicks, because I need you to hit that subscribe button as well. All right, now let me give you some specific recommendations for those of you that are studying math. And this type of problem that we just covered here could show up in any one of these courses. So Algebra 1, okay, uh, maybe a little bit in pre-algebra, but uh, typically this is like an Algebra 1 problem. You'll definitely see this like in an Algebra 2 uh, course, College Algebra course, and uh, certainly in like a pre-calculus course. You can find links to all those in the description of this video. I'm talking about a full main math courses. And uh, what comes with those is lessons, uh, example sets. I mean, just a ton of worked out problems. It's really my best work. Now, if you are not a math student and you're just interested in kind of recapturing all this uh, math, all these math skills that you once learned, check out my math skills rebuilder course. I also teach that uh, the kind of the topic that we're talking about in this video in that course as well. Okay, so let's wrap this up, and uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.